Hello everyone, it's Gary Sr. at the Race Club in Coronado, California. Welcome to our YouTube broadcast. And this week we have a really, really good show for you. Before we get started, I want to thank everybody um, for joining us. Also, for those of you who have joined up and subscribed as members, we appreciate your support. Uh, we put a lot of effort into these shows. And by joining, you hit the, the, the join button at the top of the YouTube channel screen. For the race club you can join and you will receive uh complimentary videos from time to time for us usually one or two every month this week we're sending out uh, a video that you'll receive which is a great video on freestyle flip turns and in particular this this is pertaining to the third of the four components of the turn that is the push off the wall and how we initiate when we initiate the dolphin kick so everyone who has joined will get that video. It's a great video. We hope you enjoy it. And it's very pertinent to, this, to today's discussion. So what are we going to talk about today? Today we are talking about dolphin kick on the starts and turns. And in particular, we're going to focus on two questions, one of which is very controversial and, and really uh, poorly understood, I will say at the very least, uh, and that is, how many dolphin kicks should I take to break out? Uh, and we're, we're going to answer that question. But before I get to, to that, I want to say that the other uh, topic, which frankly is not controversial because most people think they have the right answer. They just don't. And, and what they're doing, what they're teaching is the wrong thing. And that question is, when do I initiate that first dolphin kick when I'm coming off the wall on a turn? or even on a start. We're going to get to that a little bit later, but first let's start with the first question first, because we get asked this all the time. Okay, you, you know, how many dolphin kicks should I take to break out? Well, the correct answer depends on several things. One is your dolphin kick speed versus your stroke speed. And in general, when we're testing this, and we're going to share you with you a nomogram that we use to determine pretty close the right number of kicks that you should be taking to break out, um, we, we test the dolphin kick speed underwater in hyper streamline, no breath for 25 yards or meters. And then we compare that with an all out 25 freestyle, no breath, no dolphin kicks off the wall. So what we're doing is essentially comparing a time for 25 yards of the dolphin kick speed versus the freestyle swimming speed. So what do we do then? Well, we take that time difference. Okay. Again, the number of dolphin kicks that you take is going to depend on your dolphin kick speed, the event that you're swimming, uh, in other words, what stroke and how far is that stroke or how far is that event. Uh, and I'll explain more in a minute. And the third really important factor in determining how many kicks you take is your aerobic capacity. How long are you able to stay underwater and do those kicks? So uh, let's get back to this test and how do we determine the number of kicks? And this is based on freestyle pretty much for a 50 or 100, okay? Not a 200 and up because when you get to the 200 and up, everything changes, especially over a 200. And I'll explain a little bit more about in a second. But when we do these tests, we subtract the time difference. Now I will say this, there are some elite swimmers who actually can kick 25 dolphin kick underwater faster than they can swim it. But 99% of the swimmers we test, they're slower kicking than they are swimming. So we take the, the, the kick time, subtract the swim time, and, and we know what is that difference? What is the time difference between those? And here's the nomogram that we use. Um, if there's more than a five second difference in time, in other words, the kick is more than five seconds slower than your swim, you really have no right, no real logical explanation for doing any dolphin kicks at all. In fact, the more dolphin kicks you do, the further behind you're going to get, not against your, just your competitors, but where you would have been if you didn't do dolphin kicks. So we recommend, and a lot of master swimmers fit into this category. Um, one of the most common mistakes we see coaches making is, you know, be like Mike, be like Michael Phelps, take, you know, seven or eight kicks to break out, try to get to 15 yards or get past the flags and then come up. Um, most of the time that advice is ill-advised based on their dolphin kick speed. So uh, to really determine the right number of kicks, take the time difference. If there's more than five seconds, 
probably shouldn't be doing any dolphin kicks at all. Most masters that we look at and, and test are in that category. They're better off doing a couple of flutter kicks, getting up and swimming, whether it's on a start or a turn. No dolphin kicks. The dolphin kicks they take are so knee bendy that they basically stop themselves in the water before they, as they come off the wall. And they're coming off with usually pretty good speed. Now, if they're between two and five seconds, uh, then we, when we recommend the minimum number of kicks to take. And what is the minimum number of kicks to take? Well, it's about three to four kicks on the start. I've seen two and up, but it's really hard to do that. And usually you're a little shallow when you do that. So you want to go three or four kicks to break out on the start. And then you want to take two on the turns, two and up on the turns. You really don't want to go. And, and frankly, if you go deep on the turn, you made a really poor turn. So you really want to not put, push off down, push off straight off the wall, get your two kicks in quickly and get up and start swimming. If you're between 1.5 and 1.9 seconds, then we add one more to that. So we'll take four to five dolphin kicks on the, to break out on the start and recommend three to four on the turn. Uh, on the breakout. So we add at least one, maybe two more to that, depending on whether you're closer to 1.5 or you're closer to 1.9. And that's kind of the determining factor. Now, if you're between 1.0 and 1.4, we then add one more kick. So on the start, it's five to six dolphin kicks to breakout and four to five dolphin kicks on your turn. Again, if you're closer to one, you're more likely going to take six. If you're closer to 1.4, Five. So that's how we sort of um, judge what number of kicks you should probably take. Um, there is a factor, again, on depth, but if you're coming on a start, you can get back from any depth in six kicks pretty easily. Now, those that are less than a second, we recommend staying down as long as they are physiologically or aerobically fit enough to stay down as long as they can to the full 15 meters. Why? Well, if they're 1.0 or 0.9 seconds, let's say they're 0.9 seconds, you're probably wondering why not get up and swim if I'm faster swimming than I am kicking. The reason is simple. You're going to use less energy when you're kicking than you are when you're swimming, a lot less energy. So it makes more sense, even though you're a little slower kicking than you are swimming, to not use up that energy and save it for the swim. And you'll be able to finish the race much faster. There are a lot of um, great swimmers who, who do really well with, a slower, with, a, with, with less breaths in short course than they do in long course because they have the underwater, which requires less, uh, less energy consumption. So they're able to uh, hold a, f a breathing every four strokes, for example, especially on the women's side, where long course, they can't really necessarily do that well. So that's kind of the nomogram. Now, there's some... There's some additional asterisks that I want to mention. First of all, if you're swimming in an event of 200 meters or longer, uh, especially, you know, those that are not, don't have the aerobic capacity, you're not going to stay down for the full 15 meters. In fact, many great kickers like Townley Hawes will go two kicks and up in the 200 meters or yards. Uh, Michael Phelps would stay down in short course for almost the full 15 meters all the way through a 200. But he had tremendous aerobic capacity. He also had a faster dolphin kick than just about anybody else out there. And those two led to him staying down and really taking advantage of that. But for anything over 200, it's pretty much two kicks and up, and you don't want to really hang around underwater. You just need to get that oxygen and keep the pipeline of oxygen coming in. Now for butterfly, you're asking, what about butterfly? Well, butterfly, we add one more kick to whatever that nomogram is and for whatever you're doing. And if, it's, if you're zero, you stay with zero. But if, it's, if you're at three or four, then you go to four or five. If you're four or five, you go to five or six, et cetera. And for backstroke, we add two to the number we calculate for freestyle. So uh, that's pretty much it. And remember, in, in 200 backstrokes, again, because you've got a longer event, you're not going to be able to stay down as long. So typically, you're going to take fewer kicks to break out than you would on 100. Uh, but that's pretty much the nomogram that we recommend, and it's pretty accurate. So if you're looking to try to help your swimmers, don't just have one blanket. You're going to take this many kicks to break out, or you're going to stay down as long as you can. Figure out how many kicks each swimmer should be taking and help them out. All right, now we're going to go to the next question. This is the one that really surprised me because up until a few years ago, I thought like the rest of the world 
that the dolphin kick when you come off a wall on a turn should not be initiated right away. And the thought being there that if you start your dolphin kick right away, you're coming off with somewhere between two and three meters per second speed. That's the second fastest you're going to be in any race. The fastest you're going to be is when your fingertips hit the water in the dive where you're going five or six meters per second. But when you come off the wall, you're going pretty fast, faster than you are when you're swimming. So the thought was, well, if I start kicking too soon, I won't retain my speed. But the truth is just the opposite of that. The longer you wait, the less speed you retain. And I'm going to show you four examples. We have tested this four times, and I will test it again because coaches come up to me all the time and say, hmm, I don't know about that, but it's true. And that you have three options on your dolphin kick as to when you take it. One is take a long glide and then start kicking. Second is take a short glide and start kicking. And the third is up kick right away off the wall as soon as your toes leave the wall. Now I say up kick, that means when you're doing fly and freestyle, if you're on your backstroke, you start with a down kick, the weak side kick first. The reason you do that is because your knees have to be bent before you get this strong side kick. So you're going to start with an up kick or a weak side kick into the body vortex. So I want to show you a few velocity meter studies that, sh that prove this. And the first guy I'm going to show is a, is a great guy. His name's Aaron Greenberg. Aaron went to Yale. He's an 18 high 50 sprinter, great breaststroker, but not a great start. Sorry, Aaron, I had to throw that in. You would have been much better with a, with a great start. But at any rate, Aaron was a great swimmer, retired now. And uh, we did a study on Aaron. This was back a, a few years ago. And what we did is we looked at his uh, velocity meter study with three different times. The first one we did was with a long glide. Okay, so I'm going to bring him into the screen. This is Aaron coming off the wall to your right. Great hyper steam line, gliding forever. Now he starts his first uh, kick, and the time delay is, is already uh, measured over a second. I think it's close to two seconds before he starts his first kick. But I want to highlight two things on this video right at this point. First, on the top graph, where you see the green graph, that's his speed. And the yellow line is where he is right at this moment. Look at his, his um, trough. That's his, at the, the lowest point that he gets. And you look over to the left, you see V0.33. Or if you look on the scale, you see the bottom line is zero. The, the next line up is one meters per second. The, the next line up from there is two meters per second. He's at 0.33 meters per second, which is not far from being at a dead stop. Now look at the knee bend. That's about 90 degree bend. And, and he does that because he's trying to hit a 50 yard field goal kick. He's waited and waited and waited and he's determined that this first kick, he's gonna knock it out of the park. And in the process of making that huge knee bend, he drops the speed down to 0.33 seconds. Okay, now I'm gonna take the next one. And this is in slow motion, by the way. I'm taking you through this in slow motion. The next one we do is the medium glide, sort of a short delay before he uh, goes into his first dolphin kick. Okay, and here he comes. Now, this is a medium glide. Okay, I'm going to take you back. One, right there is where he troughs out. On the, on the top graph, you see that yellow line. He's below 0.95 meters per second. But you look at the knee bend. Not as significant as with the long glide. Now, he, he didn't glide a long time, and I don't know exactly the time it was his glide. I, I have it recorded, and it's in, this, it's in our book, actually, in Fundamentals. You can see the photos of this. But at any rate, his trough is 0.95 meters per second compared to 0.33 or whatever it was on the first one with the long glide. So he's significantly faster at his lowest point than he was when he, when he did the long glide. And so contrary to popular belief, by gliding, he's losing more speed than he is by starting the kick a little earlier. Now we did one more where we, we made him um, kick immediately. In other words, when his toes leave the wall, a millimeter off the wall, he starts the up kick. Now here he comes off and you see him pulling that foot up. And I moved the camera back so you could actually see him come up and what he's doing with his legs. And he's hitting a high velocity here. So the question is, you know, is this giving him some propulsion when he draws those, the bottom of his feet and the back of his legs up? And it actually does. It sends him up in terms of speed. And if you look at the bottom graph, that's acceleration. Now, he, he hits his peak acceleration 
when his toes come off the wall. But if you look right here, that is above the zero line. There is acceleration from the up kick there, and there's acceleration right there. So that is actually increasing his propulsion with that up kick. He has a huge vortex that follows him right off that wall, and he's using that big slipstream that he caused by his body coming off so fast, and he pu pushes up against and into that slipstream to hold his speed. Now let's see where he bends his knees. Look at that. Now that's his trough velocity above, 1.25. He wasn't over one meter per second when he took the short glide. Now he's at 1.25 meters per second. That's as slow as he gets until actually his next kick. Then he goes a little bit before down below one meter here, and he actually takes more bend on this one. But the point is that he holds his speed better when he kicks immediately. And we looked at, now I'm going to show you a comparison of all three. We looked and compared his time to five meters with a long glide, then with a medium glide and with a shore glide. And we put all three of those together, and you can see this comparison. So here you have it. Here's on the left, you see the time to five meters, 2.7 seconds uh, with virtually no glide, 2.8 seconds with a short glide, 2.88 seconds with a long glide. This is very accurate. This is to right at 5.0 meters. So there's no guessing. I mean, we're able to, to test exactly when he leaves the wall, and exactly where he hits five meters. Um, again, look at the difference in knee bend. Top one, immediate kick, not a lot of knee bend. Middle one, short glide, medium knee bend, long glide, huge knee bend. Trough velocity is on the right, 1.25, 0.95, 0.33. That's a big difference. That's a big difference. So um, it, it, was this a fluke? Was it just Aaron? Or are, does everybody like this? So we tested this with three other athletes so far, and we'll probably do it again. Uh, the next one I'm going to show is a guy named Marcus Schlesinger. Marcus uh, swam for Israel, a 51 plus 100 meter butterflyer, really fast dolphin kick, unusual velocity meter study that we did. He had a unique dolphin kick uh, study. And uh, you may remember if you're a member of our uh, videos and you've checked out, we did a, a dolphin kick comparison with undulation, big undulation, normal and, and tight undulation, or almost no undulation at all. And we did that comparison. But this was a different study we did at the same time where we said, okay, Marcus, we're going to compare no glide, medium glide, long glide. And, and we did uh, the same study that we did with Aaron. So let's see what that VM looks like with Marcus now. When you see the curves go up at the top and the bottom, that means he's pushed off the wall. That means he's moving forward. And we're not seeing him because I wanted to get the glide in here and I wanted to show his dolphin kick. So this is a really, actually really long glide. And again, you look at that knee bend and he doesn't go quite as slow as Aaron did. He only drops down to uh, 0.77 is the slowest he gets, but he still has a lot of knee bend there. Now he, he, you know, gets the speed back up with a dolphin kick. And again, on his next he doesn't slow down as much. So the slowest point he gets to is with that first kick, and it's super knee bendy. Marcus also tended to overbend his knees a little bit on each kick, uh, but you see after this first kick, you can see his troughs are, are above one meter per second. You should never really go below one meter per second in dolphin kick, we don't believe. All right, so this was the second study we did with Marcus, and you can see, you won't see him yet because I'm trying to catch his first dolphin kick. This is a longer glide. Actually, I didn't catch his first dolphin kick, but you can see he troughs. And, and there wasn't a huge difference in, in the time when Marcus did his first and second. He troughs a little bit higher, 1.11 uh, compared, to, I think, on the first one. Uh, he was a little bit higher than that. Not a whole lot of difference here between his longer glide, but there wasn't a whole lot of time difference either. Um, okay, so that's what he looked like with his short glide. Now we're going to, I forced him to do something he doesn't normally do, which is to up kick right away off the wall. All right, this is Marcus's last study. Now he, he up kicks right away, maybe a little delay, but he's pretty good. He comes off the wall. You can see he starts moving those legs up almost immediately. But look where his trough is, 1.63. That's significantly higher, both with his normal short glide and a longer glide, which was, uh, you know, 
in the 1.2 range or 1.3 range. So he's, he's really not troughing out nearly as much. And look at the knee bend here. It's still maybe a little bit over bend. He gets away with it partly because he drops his knees down. And if you see his feet, they're really in the body vortex. He's not getting them up and causing a lot of problems with his knee bend. And, and that's one of the interesting nuances of Marcus's dolphin kick t technique is by dropping his knees down, he managed to get more knee bend with less deceleration than almost anyone I've ever seen. But as he comes down, he gets that speed back up. And again, see how he drops those knees, but look where his feet. Feet are really not hanging out of his body line very much. And because of that, he does not decelerate. He doesn't have as much acceleration on the bottom graph, you can see, but he doesn't get a lot of deceleration either. And you see that really a very uniform velocity comparatively to others with his dolphin kick. All right, so next question you might be asking, well, is it true in backstroke? What do I do in backstroke? And I have two studies I want to show you in backstroke. So Amy Bilquist, national champion, elite swimmer, just recently retired, um, did this study for us a few years back. And this was with a super long glide. Now, I, did, I missed her initial dolphin kick because I was actually testing her dolphin kick speed here. And this was kind of her normal um, push off the wall. We'll go back here and we'll look at her trough velocity. And this is coming from the knee bend again as she comes off the wall. Look how long the glide is. Her speed went, just on the glide alone, her speed dropped from a peak of when she left the wall, just to show you how fast she's going when she leaves the wall. And then you can't even see the top of the graph, but she's going two and a half meters per second. And just gliding, look at her speed. It's just dropping off a cliff. It's coming down. Okay, now she takes the down, uh, she presses down and notice again right here on the lower graph. You can't see her. But the orange line is above, meaning as she pushes down against the vortex, she's accelerating. And her, and her speed goes back up a little bit. So she's holding her speed, actually increasing her speed with that initial down kick. Then she bends the knees, goes into the up kick, and she troughs at 0.82. All right, now she goes into her kick from there as she would. And she's a fast kicker, by the way. She takes 10, 11 kicks to break out, goes the full 15 meters. Now we take a short glide. Okay, and again, I did not catch the knee bend on her with this, but let's go back to her trough speed. And this is where she troughs out, right there at 1.45 meters per second, higher than with a longer glide. So her um, glide time was significantly shorter than the first time, as you can see that by the length of that uh, line that's descending. And again, very fast kicker. Um, she goes through. Now we, we do an immediate uh, kick off the wall. All right, no glide at all. Again, I didn't, I wasn't able to, to get the kick actually in the, in the shot on this. So her trough here comes to 1.77 meters on her first kick, which is pretty amazing. I'm going from 1.4 up to 1.7, really not losing speed, gaining speed, hitting a, a peak at 2.81 after that down kick. So she sends her, her speed up faster with that first up kick. Anyway, again, the difference in time, like with um, uh, Marcus and Aaron, was about a tenth of a second uh, slow, <clears throat> slower to five meters and two tenths of a second slower uh, with the long glide to five meters. <clears throat> now the last one I'm gonna show you is a, an athlete named Josh Zukowski. And Josh is, uh, will be a senior in high school, uh, great swimmer from Florida, uh, great backstroker. <clears throat> and we did the same comparison. I think with Josh, we only compared two. We compared a short glide and no glide at all. So we don't have a long glide with him. All right, so this is Josh Zukowski. And Josh, a uh, great backstroker. We did this study down in Florida in Alamorada. Now, in this first study, he's coming off the wall with what he considered his normal glide. Notice he's gliding here not excessively long, starts by pressing down here. Now you can see, you can see the, the down kick occurring. And you can actually go back and see as he presses down, even though he's late, he still gets some acceleration from this on the bottom of the orange graph, meaning he's, he's speeding up. Look at his velocity up above. By just pressing down, he gets faster, not slower. 
And then he goes into this pretty big knee bendy first kick. <clears throat> All those feet aren't hanging out to dry. He's got him in the body vortex, so he's not going to get hurt by the knee bend. And then his speed goes back up uh, here to 2.02 uh, meters per second. Now we're going to go to his next study. Again, Josh was not accustomed to taking a kick right off the wall. And you're going to see him coming right off the wall and, and starting that down kick almost immediately. And you're going to see the difference in his trough velocity here. Okay, so now he kicks right away. He comes off and boom, he, he presses down right into that, right there. And, and look at the acceleration he gets because the body vortex is huge. He's got a huge vortex that he's pushing down against. And by pressing down, he sends his speed up to almost three meters per second. He accelerates by pressing down into that vortex. Now he bends his knees and he gives not very much, by the way, here, because it's early. And he gets the speed back up, accelerates again, <clears throat> but he actually gets more acceleration from that down kick than he does from the first up kick. The trough velocity really happens before he even hits, starts kicking. He, I mean, he's just leaving the wall right now, and right here is when he hits his peak velocity. So it really is very unusual in that respect, but his trough is still not very 1.34 that's as slow as he gets and with a down kick he goes way up there to two, almost three meters per second so that down kick is huge even stronger than his up kick on the way up this is where his feet are moving through the body vortex he gets a little bit of acceleration 6.28 meters per second squared sends it up again and because of the feet being up he, he decelerates then he presses down through the body vortex again and off he goes so Again, we looked at those two differences with a long or medium glide is normal and, and no glide at all. And he was 0.1 meter, approximately 0.1 meter uh, or 0.1 second faster to five meters. All four cases, very similar. 0.1 faster than a short glide, 0.2 faster than a long glide. So we advocate um, no glide at all. And the, the only exception I will say to that is when you're swimming a 1500 or a a 500 there's a rest factor in here and if you're coming off the wall and you're and you're doing a long event you may take that short very short glide just taking a pause it's harder work when you do that up kick right away but if you're in 100 or 200 or, or 50 uh, you better up kick right away coming off that wall and on the start we also consider getting down and making that first entry a down kick and then getting right up into the up kick uh, not over bending the knees on those kicks uh, because you're going into the water even faster when you hit the water in the start. So those are our two lessons for the day. We have uh, one, how, do you, how many kicks do you take off the wall, fly back or, and free, and, and depending on the, and the, uh, the, the difference in time between your free time and your, and your um, dolphin kick speed, you can kind of come up with a nom or using our nomogram with about the right number of kicks you should take. And the other question is, which really isn't a question, people just don't think that it is a, a controversy, but it is. Uh, don't glide off the wall, take the up kick right away and you'll be faster. That's it for today. I look forward to answering your questions at this time. So uh, let us know what you're thinking and uh, we look forward to um, answering your questions. Thank you. Okay, let's take some questions now. Um, that was a lot of new information for many of you, and uh, hopefully it'll be helpful. Uh, by the way, that's the first time we put that nomogram so detailed on paper together. If anybody wants a copy of that, we can send it to you. Uh, I want to give a shout out to uh, Sandra Jones, great coach uh, in Virginia. Sandra's also a great swimmer. She came down to one of our master's camps. And Sandra, great to have you on the show. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if anybody wants that, let us know. But uh, two things, uh, please join. Uh, if you hit the join button at the top of the YouTube channel screen, you'll get that video once or twice a month, probably twice a month. Uh, this week we sent out, actually this morning, uh, a, a video on freestyle flip turns, kicking off the wall. Again, emphasizing the up kick being immediate, coming off the wall. Um, also, if you hit the join button, make sure you hit the bell next to the join button because, uh, or the subscribe button, 
because that'll mean you get a reminder for the show. And then if you're like me, you will forget. You can always see the show later. It'll always be on YouTube. You can find it and, and uh, you can watch it later. But if you want to see it live and you want to see it when we're, when we're broadcasting or if you want to ask questions during the show, then you need to get that alarm to remind you to be on the show. All right, let's take some, some questions. The first one comes uh, from AQ World's PVP. What's the tip on getting a strong and fast dolphin kick? I'm telling you, if I could answer that question easily and make it happen quickly, I would, um, I would be proclaimed a genius, but I can't. It's a, it's a long, hard process and takes years to develop it. Uh, I always I tell the story often about Maggie McNeil, who was you know, with me when she was, I think, 11, 12, 13. A, a very talented issue of swimmer. She's the one, if you don't know, who won the Olympic Games and World Championships in the 100-meter fly, uh, went to the University of Michigan. But Maggie had a good kick, but it wasn't a great kick. She had took her, you know, 10 years to develop the kick. And maybe she's the fastest dolphin kicker in the, on the women's side today. And I'm not even sure that she might not be the fastest kicker, period, because she's so good. And, and some of the fastest kickers ever recorded uh, are women. Natalie Coughlin, faster kicking speed than Michael Phelps. So, um, you know, Maggie's way up there. The point is you got to work on the flexibility of the ankles you got to work on the mechanics and, and we we did a show last time on the dolphin kick mechanics it's really tricky uh the right amount of hip flexion the right amount of knee bend not allowing the feet to hang pushing pulling up and pressing down hard all those things have to happen and then you got to be able to sustain that for a long period of time there's no rest in there so uh to, to build a strong dolphin kick start with uh, ankle flexibility if you don't have that, you're, you're not going to get fast, period. You can kick eight hours a day, you're not going to get fast without having that ankle flexibility. How do you get that? Well, go to our website. We have some great videos on that. Uh, if you subscribe, we have I don't know how many dry line videos showing you how to increase your ankle flexibility. I can't go into it now, but it's detailed. It, there's two or three different exercises that are really good at increasing your ankle flexibility. All right, so let's go to another question. We've got Adam Berger. Uh, Sunrise, Sunrise Mountain High School. Uh, Gary, watching Ryan swim the Masters meet in Arizona at ASU, he, he took five or six dolphin kicks. And that's, that's what Ryan does. They're at the elite level, which Ryan is, Ryan's Olympian, a uh, great freestyler, uh, trained with uh, Coley Stickles the last Olympics. I guess he's now training with Bob Bowman. But when the elite swimmers swim the 50 and the 100, there's basically two options. They either get up and swim as fast as they can, as quickly as they can, or they stay down for the 15 meters. And Ryan's one of those guys who's a fast kicker, a good start, and he's better off. He's probably, I'm sure he's tested it both ways, but he's faster staying down to 15 meters. And um, most, I would say, the majority of the elite swimmers stay down to 15 meters. They're all fast kickers. Uh, but there's another question that was asked about Nathan Adrian. Nathan Adrian got up and swam very, very quickly. So did Anthony Irvin, three kicks and up. Gary Jr., three kick, two or three kicks and up. And why did they do that? Well, they're very fast swimmers, but their dolphin kick wasn't as strong as their swimming speed. So they tested both ways, and I, I'm, I'm sure Anthony is a much faster swimmer than he is a kicker. And so it was much better for him to get three kicks, get up and get going, than it was for him to stay down. And, and try to go, you know, duke it out with some of these guys at 15 meters on the dolphin kick. Um, we talked about Caleb's start. We did an analysis of his start. He's not only got this amazing vertical, but when he gets in the water, he really is faster dolphin kicker than anyone else out there. So he has the two most important techniques on a start in spades. And it's pretty hard to beat a guy like that who has that kind of vertical and that kind of dolphin kick. You know, there are eight other points to start. He could do all eight poorly and still beat everybody on the start. So, um, all right, so let's take another question. Uh, we answered the one about Nathan. Um, you know, sometimes you just have to test it and it's hard when you don't have a velocity mill like we do, but you can test a 25 time with three kicks and up, which is about the minimum you're gonna take to, a, you know, whatever you think, use the nomogram, come up with whatever you think you should take and test it against three meters or three kicks to break out and see which way is faster. Um, and do it several times, don't just do it once. 
Uh, some, some swimmers use a side or dolphin kick on their side before the breakout. What do I think about it? Well, that's a great question. Um, we've tested a fair number, I wouldn't say a lot of swimmers, comparing their stomach, their side, and their back. The most notable one that we've tested, also a very fast kicker, was Kelsey Dahlia. Um, and Kelsey um, used to be Kelsey Worrell, now she's Kelsey Dahlia, Olympian in 2016. Um, and I think what we found with Kelsey is pretty common, but not with everyone. And, and what we found with her was she was faster. I don't remember the exact speeds, but she was faster uh, on her back. The fastest she was, was was on her back. Ryan Lochte figured that out years ago, and that's why he created this freestyle where he stayed on his back and flipped over on his stomach. Actually, the first person that really realized they were faster on their side then on their stomach was Misty Hyman back in 2000. And her coach, who was a very bright guy, Bob uh, Gillett, uh, Bob Gillett. And Bob, you know, had always was taking notes and, and, and measuring and, and trying, he was a very science oriented guy. But he measured her time and he realized she was faster kicking on the side. So she would stay on her side until the very end and flip over in her stomach at breakout. Uh, Ryan, you know, in a freestyle event, he would, you know, later in his career, he would stand us back to 15 meters. Can't do that on the IM, by the way, just on the freestyle events. Um, so in general, you're probably a little faster on your side than you are on your stomach. It wasn't a huge difference. And I wanna, I'm just guessing here, but in, with, uh, with Kelsey, it might've been 1.7, 1.75, 1.78, something like that. But she was a little bit faster going to her side and then even faster getting on her back. Um, and, and it begs the question, why? Why are you faster on your back than you are on your side? And that has to do with the law of inertia. And when you look at the velocity meter curves of the same athlete doing a dolphin kick on their side and their back, you see a very different curve. And that, the reason for that is because when you're coming up, upward is the strong kick, you create this big vortex from the feet of the water moving up behind the feet, and it mushrooms out because of gravity. And so it kind of hangs around there. And so when you go to the down kick, you can press down against this big mushroom vortex that's now sinking because of, of gravity, and it's like pushing off a wall. So the power of the weak side becomes actually stronger in many of the athletes that get more speed on their down, on their weak side kick than they do on their strong side because of that vortex. And they also have gravity to help them push down harder at the bottom of their feet. So it, it's, it's really those two factors with the effect of the vortex. Remember, when you're coming down with that big, strong kick, gravity just takes that vortex and keeps moving it down toward the bottom of the pool. So it's very hard to catch it on the way up. And when you're coming up with it, it hangs around and you can push down against it with the bottom of your feet and boom, you get great surge of speed on the weak side. You don't even want to call it the weak side because it's, it becomes as strong as the strong side when you're on your back. Uh, and so what we see is the speed remaining more constant. You don't get as much surge on the up kick, but you get much more speed on the weak side down kick. And, and because of that, it's faster. You don't have as much up and down mo uh, velocity, so it's mechanically more efficient way to kick than on your stomach or on the side. All right, so that's enough about that. Uh, if you want to see more about that or read more about that, I have a uh, I talk about that in the book on the fundamentals of fast swimming. If you haven't uh, purchased a copy of my book, go to theraceclub.com and get a copy, read it. And, and it's, I'm not bragging, but it's just got a lot of information in there that you need to know and you should know. So if you haven't gotten a copy, I, I recommend you get it. Um, all right, let's see if we got some other questions here. Uh, question related to measuring 25 free versus underwater. How do you adjust for 25 backflow versus 25 underwater? Well, we kind of went over that. If you want to do it the most accurate way, you would do a 25 dolphin kick on the back underwater and test that against a 25 backstroke with no dolphin kicks. Just get up and swim backstroke. And that's the most accurate way to do it. We, we cheat a little bit because we don't usually have time to do that for our athletes in a camp. We'll just test them with freestyle. We'll add one more kick to the nomogram for fly and two more for backstroke. That's a rough way of coming up with the right answer but if you want to know the, the most accurate way of doing it test your dolphin kick on your back versus your um, your backstroke speed and see and see what the difference is there and why is it more kick because backstroke is slower than uh, 
than freestyle, and dolphin kicking on your back is faster than, than dolphin kicking on stomach, so it makes that differential less. And also on a backstroke start, you're typically gonna go deeper than you are on a freestyle start. Um, okay, what about breaststroke? Glide or take the dolphin quickly? That's a, another great question. And in freestyle, or in breaststroke, you can't glide forever, but you don't wanna take the dolphin kick right away. As you come in, uh, basically there's a short glide, then the kick. We, we feel that there should be a pretty even space between the four propulsive events of a breaststroke pullout. One is the, either the push off the wall or the push off the starting block. The second is the dolphin kick. The third is the pull down, and the fourth is the breaststroke kick out. And those are four different propulsions you're getting on that start, and they should be spaced pretty evenly. So when you get in the water, you don't want to kick right away. You want to get power out of that kick, so you wait just a little bit, get a little power using your chest as well. It's a little bit different than coming off the wall in a freestyle or a butterfly or a backstroke. Uh, so that's our recommendation right now in breaststroke. We, do, we don't recommend kicking. Uh, immediately off the wall, but kicking, and there's a pause. Remember, you got to get up on your breaststroke turn in about 4.5 seconds. That means you really have to get that dolphin kick in less than a second. So you're going to get that, and you've got two more to go. You got your pull down, your breaststroke kick, and then you got to break out into your swim. Um, okay, I think that's all the questions we have, and we appreciate your time, your interest. Hope you enjoyed the show. Um, not sure what we're going to talk about next time, but join us in two weeks uh, on Thursday, uh, 2 o'clock uh, Pacific, 5 o'clock Eastern, and uh, we'll broadcast all over the world. And invite your friends to join. And remember, if they missed a show, they can always catch it on our YouTube channel at theraceclub.com uh, on our YouTube channel. So thank you again. I hope that some of you guys will, will subscribe not only to our YouTube channel, but also to our subscription, where we have now, I think, over 350 videos in our lane three, and about a half or a little more than half of that in lane two. So thanks again. We hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you in two weeks.